Today on the channel, in honor of Halloween, we've got a special top five. As my dad is here, we're going to count down the top five universal monsters of all time. The Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Kyle Peterson Top 5. But today, we got a special guest as my dad. Dad, welcome. Yeah, thank you. My dad is here because it is Halloween, and I figured, Dad, it would be the perfect time for us to count down our Top 5 Universal Monsters of all time. Of course, usually I do these things solo, but I thought you could j dive in on this. You could give your expertise and count down the old top five Universal Monsters of all time. And plus, you thought I was the scariest person you could have at, at <laughs> I said, Halloween. I said, you know, I really want to get the effects budged up for this there video. I need a guy that doesn't need a lot of uh, makeup and stuff that's just naturally scary. And go. I said, hey, there it is. We wore, he him. wore his best Halloween costume. He's got an orange hat on, at least. Yeah. I got my Frankenstein shirt on, my Wild Heart shirt, for those that know. Uh, but today, we're going to talk our top five Universal Monsters. Mm. And obviously, the first uh, experience for me with Universal Monsters was via the Aurora model kits. As a little kid, you had those in the house That's that true. you had from when you were a little kid. Very true. And you had, how many? what Aurora model kits did you have of the Universal Monsters growing up as a kid? Pretty much all of them, I think. Uh, the ones I didn't have would be a much shorter list. I think I didn't get Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That was a model. Uh, there were some variations of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's Fliver, and a few of those comedic type things. But uh, yeah. all, the, all the major ones I did when I was in fifth and sixth grade. You didn't want any of that comedy stuff. You just wanted the creature, the wolfman, Phantom of the Opera, the mummy... All those. King Kong, Godzilla. What else did you have? Um, Is that it? I think. I think so. Wolf some you some kid wolf stole. Man, yeah. Some kid stole one from me though, didn't he or there, something? There was one. I think oh, I took to a school go. model show, and it, it came up missing. And that was the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which really isn't truly a monster. It was just a poor, just dis, a confused soul, disfigured poor bell ringer who the public mistook for a, a criminal. And, you know, the, the difference between you and me, maybe on this one, and maybe it's just, uh, you're a little older than me, a couple years, yeah. and maybe it's, you've settled, but that would eat me alive if I went to a show uh, as a kid at the school and somebody stole my hunchback. I would still be bringing that up on a daily basis. It, it, it was tragic, and it was expertly painted, and uh, I'd never replaced it, but... Uh... Uh, fortunately, all the major ones I have, including the uh, giant Frankenstein, was one that we put together, which was very expensive in its day, and uh, they've since reproduced. I but. think we need to get a GoFundMe together, and uh, <laughs> we can get you that hunchback back. But I know me, I know, and you probably remember this story, I think I talked about it every single day for about 20 years. Uh, when I was in kindergarten, we had a show and tell, and I brought the Striker, G.I. Joe Striker, to school. Had, of course, Crank Case, the driver for the Striker. They had to put it up on this old radiator. It was the olden times. The school was heated by a radiator. And my teacher knocked Crank Case over, and in between the wall there was a little gap. Crank Ooh. Case fell into the basement of the school, never to be seen again. And they wouldn't go down there and get it, anything like that, and it eats me alive to this day. The janitor picked it up out of the boiler and kept it for his kids. That's I, my guess. Sure of that. uh, that's yeah, my guess. Sure but that, that still eats me to live, yeah. and that's from 1986 that happened. I remember that. And that I was... am still traumatized by that. I want my crankcase back, and I've never uh, quite recaptured that magic. And I would think you'd have the same experience with that hunchback, but maybe not. Maybe that's true. It, maybe time heals all wounds. Uh, maybe it, just I needed some more years, and yeah, I'll probably, forget. Probably after 58 years, you kind of get over it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know yeah. that crankcase. I love that Ostriker, yeah. but... Yeah. Anyways, we're here to talk about the Universal Monsters. We're going to do this list like we do all the other lists on the channel. We're going to start at number five, work our way to number one, of course. Number one being our favorite. I'm going to ask you guys at home, put your list together in the comments. This should be a pretty easy one. I think everybody knows the Universal Monsters. you got Frankenstein, Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera, Dracula, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, all the heavy, heavy hitters, of course, of the monster game. So we're going to count them down, get your list together, and we're going to start it off at... Number five. All right, we kick it off at number five, and we're counting down our top five universal monsters of all time. And I'm going to start with this one, Dad, and we're going to start at number five for me. 
is the mummy, of course, the mummy. Boris Karloff, you know, is the mummy. Uh, the mummy is a very famous one. So this is my opinion on the mummy, and then you can uh, give your next one and give your opinion on him. But my opinion on the mummy was it was fairly boring. Uh, one of the more boring universal monsters as a kid. Now, the mummy was really cool, but I remember it just the anticipation to see the mummy. It just took forever to get there, and maybe that's an impatient young Kyle. And, you know, back in 1932 when the mummy came out, patience was a virtue back then, and people People had the patience, like Grandpa Peterson. I'm sure he had all the patience in the world for it. I wonder if he ever watched The Mummy. Don't know. Don't know. We'll have to ask him next time the we mummy, see him. The Mummy himself was very patient. <laughs> he was a very patient. He was also fairly slow. But, very slow. But, you know, he would catch people, and they'd walk backwards. And Anyways, but The Mummy was a little bit boring for me, but The Mummy was iconic. It was a very iconic uh, thing. We all knew who The Mummy was. We're all scared of The Mummies. And still to this day, whenever you see those like uh, National Geographic shows, whatever, where they found all oh, a new sarcophagus, a new mummy's tomb and all that, I always remember back to the old mummy's curse. And I'm like, you know what? You better be careful. You, you move that lid off and all of a sudden the like mummy's curse gets you. Because I remember they said these people that found these mummies back in the day that like they were cursed and they died a couple weeks later, a year later in a bus accident or something. It's it's the mummy's curse. So you got to watch it's out It's happened to a lot of people even more than COVID. Yeah, that's right. More than COVID. I think more people Absolutely. perished mm -hmm. from the mummy's curse than COVID. I right. think that's a fair stat. It might be close, but I think the mummy's I, got it. I edge. remember that. Yeah. There's a lot of mummies. A lot of mummies. But the movie, fairly boring. Of course, many sequels. How many? Like three sequels? There two were sequels? four sequels. Jeez. And I think all but one was Lon Chaney as the mummy. Uh, Boris Karloff was in the original mummy, which he took on a different persona after, you know, escaping the tomb. He became Ardeth Bay, who was like a scientist, high priest type individual. Didn't look like the mummy, but it was a different persona. And, and later, uh, you know, was the mummy in the in the other films. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Just never did a ton for me, but it's so iconic. It had to be on my list. That's why it came in at last place for me at number five. Now, Dad, we turn it off to you. Who is your number five universal monster of all time? I think I would go with the creature. Oh, leave right now. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'd go the creature. Although the creature represents kind of a, a return to a theme that started with King Kong. And that was man is the enemy of the environment. And we have this creature who's swimming around the Black Lagoon, not bothering anyone. And these scientists come and intrude in his habitat. And uh, it all goes downhill from there. And in the sequels that followed. But, you sound uh, like, you sound like five. You sound like you're one class away from a film minor when you say <laughs> things like that. That's a deep thought about the creature. Uh, but the creature, number five, huh? Really? I would, yes. Really? Uh, basically because the plot isn't quite as deep as some of the other uh, other in the top five list. And that's why I probably like it so much because I'm just not a deep thinker. <laughs> I'm just not. I, I like, I like if I ever watch something on TV, I want to turn my brain off. I want it to be, I don't want to have to think. I don't want to have to like, oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But The Creature had sequels as well. Did. Uh, two more, I think it was. The second one, I didn't mind so much. The third one, where he was on land and he was like a big hulked up dude. Lost I think all his gills. Lost yeah. his gills. Yeah. That one a little bit far. Yeah. That's Is that like Creature Walks Among Us or something so, like yes. that? That's worth watching maybe one time. But that was a little disappointing. And I'm shocked we haven't got a new Creature from the Black Lagoon. A true horror film. Mm -hmm. Maybe next summer I'm going to try to get some vacation. I might film that at home. Yeah. We'll, we'll go down to Sailor Village lake and film it we'll they, see what happens they could have called that creature on the love boat instead of creature walks and <laughs> yeah because he's on a boat all the time. he was he was but yeah that was that yeah. was a rough one but all right. all right i'm going mummy five you're going creature yeah i'm you're shocked i didn't just make you leave the house right now but uh we're at five now we're going to turn our attention to number four all right, we're at the number four spot in our countdown, and Dad, you're going to kick it off at number four. Well, I'm going to flip with you. I'm going with the mummy as number four, mm -hmm. and uh, it does have a pretty deep backstory in Egyptology and all of that, but uh, it, it, it's my number four. Have you ever been to Egypt? Uh, no. Would you ever go? No. No, me neither. I don't know. I'd like to see the pyramids sometime. You know, uh, that was really cool. They built those pyramids for that uh, Kiss album cover back in the oh. 80s. I think that's what that's they were how actually built for. Started. I got it. But I wonder how they got all those stones up there in those pyramids. I don't know. I always wonder about that. Late at night, I lay in bed. Is how'd they do that? A lot of people say it's ancient aliens. Uh, I've heard the ancient aliens. And speaking of, they're coming to town, I heard. The ancient alien people. That one guy with the crazy hair. My kind of guy. Yeah. My kind of guy. But uh, you're going mummy at number four. So you're, we're not too far no, off there. No. We're, it's a, it's a catch em. No. It's a <laughs> You can give or take. It's, it's not give or take. Yeah. And it is. I think we both agree. It drags a little bit in spots, especially all these years right. later. But I guess... Way back in 1932, it built the suspense. The suspense was brewing. It was building uh, for the mummy and his great comeback. And 
Anyways, the mummy is the mummy. So you got him at number four. Number right. four for me, I'm going Dracula. Yes, this is Ooh. controversial. I know, Ooh. I know. It's controversial because I think out of all the horror icons, I, I would think out of all the movies that have been released about these characters, be it Universal or anything else, Dracula is probably the one that's had the most adaptations or stories True. or TV shows and things like that. I guess you could very well say probably the most iconic horror icon of all time. I think you... I think you could make the case that Dracula is probably that. I mean, some might say, like, Captain Spaulding from House of Thousand Corpses. He might be right up there for me, but uh, Dracula, for sure, just because he is so iconic and stuff. And Bela Lugosi, I mean, he is Dracula. You see his face, you just say, that is Dracula. Obviously, he had a little bit, bit of makeup on him, but that was Bela Lugosi. And I'm sure for years after that, people were like, hey, there's Dracula. He's walking down the street. What, what are you doing buying garlic at the produce store? That doesn't make sense. He was made for that part. He really was made for that part. He just killed it in that role. And what holds Dracula back for me uh, is it is a little bit slow as well. It is very old. Obviously, it came out in 1931. So I don't want to say it doesn't hold up because I can still watch it. But it is very old. I mean, it's not like Nosferatu old, uh, but it is a little bit older. And that does take a little of the shine off for me on Dracula. Uh, still really good. And I do remember Elle. You know Elle, my daughter. Mm -hmm. You, you might have met her. Yeah. yeah. She, when she was like four years old, we watched every Universal Monster to get movie together. I couldn't oh, wow. believe she had the patience to do that, especially, you know, it's tough <laughs> for these kids these days. And she was really uh, taken by Dracula. And that was her favorite at the time, which ah. kind of surprised me a little bit. But very, very good. A tale as old as time, Dracula, of course. And like I said, many in, in uh, incarnations over the years of Dracula. Uh, but yeah, it, it just kind of is what it is for me. And it dropped all the way down to number four in my top five list. Now we turn our attention to number three. All right, we're at the halfway point. You guys know what to do at this point. Make sure you get your list together. Make sure you put it in the comments down below and make sure you put it in order. That's the challenge. That's the fun mm -hmm. of these lists. All right, I'm going to start off at number three, and this is this is tough. This is where the big boys play, like a young WCW, the top three right. here. And I went back and forth, and I still, you know, I always say about these top five lists, you ask me a year from now, this order really could change. It's kind of a moment in time, uh, especially the action figure ones. Sometimes, you know, I, yeah, this is where I like it, and then all of a sudden you fall in love with the character all over again or the figure all over again, and you're off to the races. But number three for me, we go back to 1931. Oh, what a time to be alive. Just a beautiful time. I think you were about what? Negative 20. I think so. <laughs> Negative 20. It was during the Depression. <laughs> it was during the yeah. Depression, which was truly hard times. It was. And there was a lot of disappointment in the Depression. Uh, Grandpa Peterson, we'll have to get him on the channel. You think he'd want to come in and talk about don't this? Know. I don't know. I don't know if he'd want to relive those days. Do we not. got enough room for three people? <laughs> I, we could do it in descending order. You and then Grandpa and then me. It's just the height descending order. It'll be interesting. Yeah, there you go. But number three. Frankenstein, yes, Frankenstein's monster, another iconic universal monster, another iconic character throughout many a years, the confused monster, and we all know, you know, the monster really wasn't Frankenstein, it was Dr. Frankenstein, right. always, people always very confused Frankenstein's about that. monster. Frankenstein's monster, right. there you by go. Dr. Frankenstein. There you go, and that Dr. Frankenstein, it's up to no good, grave robbing, doing things like that, you can go to jail for that, I've heard, uh, I've been told. But uh, Frankenstein, <laughs> awesome movie, of course, the first one, probably... You know what? I was going to say the first one's probably my favorite, but I think uh, Frankenstein vs. the Wolfman is my favorite Frankenstein oh. movie. Uh, I always enjoyed that one. Both are really good. Uh, the favorite scene for me as a little kid was, of course, Frankenstein uh, playing with that little girl. Right. It reminds me a lot of me playing with Emma sometimes. <laughs> we're, we're playing out in the backyard, and just all of a sudden I'll throw her in the pool. And it's just, that's kind of the way well, it that, goes. That's the beauty of the Frankenstein movie. You have this violent monster in one half of the personality. You had a monster attracted to pure innocence on the other half. Little kids or a blind shepherd in a shack yep. or a hunchback named Igor. Uh, he does. He does have a milder side to it with the right people. Deep, deep thoughts there. Right, and right. once again, I think you're the one a uh, film class away from a minor in film. Oh boy, you could be. Maybe you should take that final class with me. I tell you, uh, it'll be like 2044. But I'll take that class. There is one Frankenstein movie that I think is in the top three of all movies, though, and that's Bride of Frankenstein. Okay. Very complex. A lot of twists and turns. Um, it starts out with the author Mary Woolcraft Shelley. Uh, in the movie, and then she ultimately becomes the bride of Frankenstein. They, they, the same actress morphs into that. So, but it, it's it's very different plot and uh, just well done. 
You know, I don't know if I've seen The Bride of Frankenstein in 20-some years. Maybe I need to revisit that. It will Maybe. be on Sven Gulli this Saturday night. Oh, Sven Gulli. We need to get you and Sven Gulli together, you Beyond know. Beyond Sven Gulli this Saturday night, as you a know, matter of fact. I'm headed to Chicago. This will be old. This is going to be released around Halloween time. But, you know, I'm going to Chicago. We could go to Berwyn. <laughs> we could take a stop Berwyn. off. And you and Sven could have a little lunch together. And say, Sven, it's your biggest fan. It's your old buddy. It's your old buddy Tom. We're here to have party. We're, here We're to the same out. age. We could party the same at the same you rate. Could. You, you could. You could. Yeah. We, we might have to get that figured out. We'll there have to go. get that figured out. Okay. But for me, Frankenstein, a, a good one, a great one. One of the all-timers, of course. One of the most iconic. I always love the big characters. You guys know I love big characters. And Frankenstein was a big dude. I wonder how tall Frankenstein was. At least seven foot. Seven foot. Oh, man. Almost like a young giant Gonzalez. Oh, giant <laughs> Gonzalez. One of the all-time greats. Uh, but Frankenstein, 1931, going to come in at number three. For me, Dad, now you're on. You're on the clock. Number three, I'll go with Wolfman. Oh, uh, that I, I mentioned in the past that whiny Larry Talbot that becomes the Wolfman yeah, with a full yeah. moon. But uh, once again, nobody wants to be a Wolfman, and, yeah. it, and it certainly wasn't Larry's fault that he was bitten by a wolf, <laughs> a werewolf in the woods. Uh, and then you get to live the rest of your life with this schizophrenic personality. You're you're a good guy who's crying and and you know going through all these behaviors uh, during the day, and then at night you're this vicious vicious, vicious creature. So. Uh, Kind of a, a, it's a different curse. movie. Yeah, it's the it Wolfman's Curse, really. And Gypsy's not the finest light uh, in that one. Uh, I don't know if you saw... Have you been watching... A little offshoot here. Have you been watching Tales from the Territories on Vice? I think it's on YouTube as well. It's no. about... You would enjoy this show. It's about old school wrestling territories back in the day. Oh, okay. And when now, now when I think of gypsies, I just add another one. And, and no offense to you, gypsies watching. I'm sure there's quite a few gypsies. I'm I'm big with the gypsies. I don't oh, know if you knew that. Oh, Very true. I didn't know that. Very true. The gypsies and I were like this. But there was a wrestler named uh, some Galindo or something like that. And <laughs> and uh, Jerry Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett's uh, dad, he was wrestling on live TV, and this Galindo from a rival promoter came in the ring to attack him. Attacked oh. him with a razor blade in the match. And you know what, uh, Jarrett? did he pulled out his eye oh no right there in the thing and that was the gypsy those gypsies don't mess around if you ever see a gypsy don't challenge them to a fight because they are all tough I think they you're going to say maybe one of them turned into a wolf man or something. Yeah, yeah, that would have been better. Gypsy is bad. So yeah. they pulled his eye out, and then you wouldn't believe it. He oh, turned my. into a wolf man in front of the audience oh, and everything. It th everybody thought it was part of a show, but it wasn't. Glad, but I, glad I wasn't there. Tales from the Territories, that's yeah. right up my alley. I think you'll need to check mm, that one out. This, I will. This would be a show you would like. They did an Andy Kaufman one last week. That oh. was, I was all in on that one. but Like Andy. No, oh, who doesn't? <laughs> uh, but the wolf man coming in at number three for you. Frankenstein number three for me. Now we turn our attention to number two. All right, we're getting towards the end, getting closer and closer. We're at number two, and if you're not first, you're last. But number two started off here, Dad. My number two would be Frankenstein, oh. although I, it could be replaced with my number one, too. But uh, very interesting character, as I mentioned before, and I'll, I'll go with that as number two. Oh, okay. Very, very iconic number two. Of course, we talked about him. And so for me, I'm going number two, the Wolfman, because Kyle... Me, I love hairy bipedal creatures. I've been loving hairy, hairy bipedal creatures since I was a little boy, for whatever reason. I've always been transfixed by my old buddy Bigfoot, uh, the dog man of Wisconsin. I'm going to Wisconsin here in a couple days, so I'm definitely going to be... To beat uh, the dog man? Uh, hopefully, if I'm lucky enough. The Beast of Bray Road, as one may say. Ooh. So hopefully I can be careful. find him. That would be that would be quite the coup. That would yeah. be quite the coup. That would get some YouTube views, I'm sure, if I filmed me finding him. Oh boy. But the Wolfman was awesome for me. I absolutely loved the Wolfman. Uh, I love the thing about turning into a monster and then you know you get the american werewolf in uh, london those kind of things other wolfman movies i've always loved the wolfman movies and i think the wo original wolfman really started it off for me i really enjoyed him i remember as a kid there was a line of uh, books at my local library and i remember the wolfman cover of that one just transfixing me and that's one set i would love to have these wolfman books uh, it was all the Universal Monster books, and I don't know if you remember those. I used to check them out at the library all the time. They're bright orange Crestwood books, I think they were called. But I would love to get that set one day because I check those things out every single day. It's basically all I read as a kindergarten, first grader, and second grader. <laughs> now look how I turned out. Uh, but the Wolfman was just so iconic, and still to this day, I think if out of all these genres, obviously Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, I would say those are the big three that are still getting movies right. like reimagined and things. I always love a werewolf movie. I'm a sucker for a werewolf movie. Any werewolf movie, I can sit down and watch. There's something about the horror of it all. Uh, I've talked before, I think, on the channel in like 86 or so. Do you remember this show? I don't know if you watched it. I watched it, so you had to have been around. Uh, but I was like six years old, and it was called uh, Werewolf, and it was on Fox. 
It was uh, when Fox first started, and that was an amazing show. I, I need to get hmm. that on DVD or Blu-ray, but I loved that show. Uh, very violent and kind of scary for being on uh, uh, Fox over-the-air TV back in the day. But something about the Wolfman, the creature, the changing of everything, the horror of it, uh, usually the violence of it all. Just speak in my language. Just speak in my language. I'm here for it all day long. That's why the Wolfman comes in at number two on my top five list. Well, that's about it. We got one left. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you mentally prepared? I'm ready. All right. We're going to be back here. Let's do it. Number one. What is it? All right, we're here. We're at the number one spot. We're at the number one universal monster as voted by me and my dad here. And I'm going to kick this one off. And my number one, most of you guys probably know where I'm going here. My number one pick, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh. Something about the old creature. Stole my heart and never let go at a young age. Now, I love all the other guys, the Wolfman and stuff, but I don't know what it is about the creature. I don't know if it's uh, kind of the fear of the unknown of water, big avenues of water. What is there? What is lurking down there? What do we know? And uh, just a creature coming out. I mean, it's like an underwater Bigfoot is what it is. It's cre the creature from the Black Lagoon. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You know, he had some sequels, not as good as the original. Uh, and maybe the original, you know, came out in 1954. What a time to be alive, 1954. I think you were around for a little of that. Uh, I was two years old. <laughs> you were two. Yeah. So you made it. But uh, something about it, I think, maybe being newer, compared to like Dracula that came out in 31. You got a lot of years of improvements in colorization and film techniques and stuff like that. So maybe that's why I like the creature the best is because it seems more modern. Uh, nothing against older stuff, but uh, things like that just, I don't know. I don't know. But the creature, just a scary monster from uh, the lagoon, of course, the Black Lagoon, of course. And then, like you talked about earlier, the confusion of the character and, you know, is it really his fault? You know, he wouldn't be doing this if uh, man didn't come into his lagoon that he lived in. So it's just that there's a little deeper meaning to that with my old film background, of course, my film, ah, yeah. my film background. I'm, a, I'm like a young Ebert, really, at the end of the day. When you when you break it down, uh, I should have been his replacement. But uh, The Creature, 1954, that is going to be my favorite. I don't think that was too much of a surprise to anybody out there. So there it is. There's my number one, Dad. It's your turn. What is your number one universal monster of all time? My number one is Dracula, first universal movie I ever saw, monster movie I ever saw. Back in 31, I think it was it was released. Uh, very mysterious, very foreboding. Um, Dracula is the kind of nemesis that has so many tools. Uh, you know, he can he can turn into <clears throat> smoke and go through doorways. He can become a bat, a wolf, uh, just a very uh, scary person. And I guess I always thought. I can run away from Frankenstein. I can run away from the, For the sure. mummy, but this guy could come through my bedroom door and yeah, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that? I would say probably really if you're scared little kid, Dracula and the Wolfman are probably your two biggest threats. Your two biggest threats out there that are going to get you. Obviously, a werewolf could just tear down a door and bust through and do that, and then Dracula, he's got all kinds of masters of getting around. I guess what would because you even be? even looking <laughs> under your bed doesn't help you from no. Dracula no. because you know yeah. he could be anywhere. He could be anywhere. You're Right. He could be in the vents. Yeah. I mean, he could be hanging Absolutely. out. Absolutely, That is very true. That is a good point. You know, to me, the only thing about Dracula, though, was uh, I always felt like, uh, couldn't you just put a bunch of garlic on yourself at night? I mean, obviously, you're going to smell a little bit. and uh, you Or know, a my, crucifix. Yeah, a crucifix. Have a, have a mirror so a mirror. You, you can prove it's Dracula. There was ways around him a little right. bit where the werewolf, I mean, you needed a silver bullet. Or a stake in the heart could get Dracula, of course. That's true. Uh, a silver bullet was really your only stopping of the Wolfman. And, you know, as a little kid, I just didn't have any silver bullets. I didn't no. even have any weapons. So no. I was in big trouble. I knew if that Wolfman came. So I think it, if I had to rank these as the scariest and most uh, frightening for me, I think I'd say the Wolfman would be number one. Uh, would you say Dracula's still number one for you? I would, yes. Yeah, because yeah. who wants to wear a garlic necklace at all That's times? Very I mean, true. Not, not very often. And I know my wife, Angie, she hates it when I eat. She doesn't like me to have garlic because apparently it just, I smell like garlic for days, mm -hmm. she says. But that's the way it goes sometimes. But very interesting conversation there because, yeah, yeah I think because uh, the werewolf, you can really only stop with a silver bullet. That's it. Or you can hit him with a silver-headed cane. That's which, true. Which killed him in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was a little much. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> I like the silver bullet one where you got to just really drill him with the old silver bullet. Yeah. But, uh, or a Coors Light, the old silver bullet. Uh, that, that could do it too. <laughs> I could do it. I could do it to anybody. If you gave him a six pack, you could probably <laughs> shoot him very easy. <laughs> That's probably yeah. right. So there it is. There's our number ones. But what say you guys out there in YouTube land? You got your list together. Make sure you put it in the comments down below. 
And make sure you put them in order. As I always say, that is the hard part. That is the challenge there. Any final thoughts from you, Dad? No, I think it's a, a good debate, good list from both of us. So. <laughs> yep. And I think next year maybe we come back to a top five Aurora model kits, maybe. We maybe do we, that. We could talk about those one of these days here. So more to come one of these days in the channel. But like I said, put your list in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to put on the old notification bell. Don't forget to... Oh, I'm choking. <coughs> you have to edit. <coughs> Don't forget to like the old uh, channel here. Don't forget to you all hit the old... Nev <laughs> <coughs> Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on the old notification bell. Don't forget to like this video. you got to give it the old thumbs up. That helps oh, wow. the channel, That's as good. we all know. <laughs> Don't forget about the Patreon link in the description <laughs> below for early access to videos like this. Bonus content, Q&A, exclusive videos, and best of all, you do support the channel. You can also support channel ProWrestlingTees.com, search Kyle Peterson. Don't forget about social media, Sir Paul 64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for the top five Universal Monsters of all time, Dad, anything else? Where can they find you? Tom's TikTok still? Dance still, party? yeah. Although I get, I get some new moves, so it's worth checking out. He's got a special Halloween video he's coming going to release you know, I, on I Halloween. I love that Bruno Mars. Oh. I, I, I get copy his moves all day long. What about your old favorite Sleepy Brown from Outcast? Oh, there you go. Sleepy yeah, Brown. He, sleepy. he, hey, yeah. Yeah. he, hey, yeah. he yeah. changed you your life. Changed yeah, your life many moons ago, Sleepy Brown. Yeah. All right, for Sleepy Brown and my dad, <laughs> I am Kyle. We'll see you guys all real soon.